PSVR 2 Our Honest Review The PlayStation VR 2 has been developing for some time and we know it will be released early next year. But aside from that, Sony hasn't released much information about its upcoming VR headset until now. Sony recently allowed a few press outlets to test the PSVR 2. We were just as eager to hear what the hands-on testers thought. To that end, we've compiled some of the most common pros and cons of PSVR 2 accounts from various excellent tech news sites. The PSVR 2 made a big impression of these tech journalists with a stunning display, a comfortable fit, and precise tracking. On the other hand, the PSVR 2's wired design remains a disadvantage, and there's still a lot we don't know about the device, from its launch library to its price, both of which are important considerations when deciding whether or not to purchase a VR headset. So join MetaHub to know everything about this headset. Here we begin! Pass through and play space setup. Pass through video which allows you to use the headset's cameras to look out to the real world and easily define your play space boundary is a nice quality of life improvement on PSVR 2. In addition, the pass through video view on PSVR 2 is noticeably higher resolution than in Quest 2. However, it remains black and white and needs to maximize the headset's display resolution. The PSVR 2 play space setup process is similar to Quest 2's. You can draw an outline within your headset to set your boundary. Furthermore, the headset scans the environment around you to make an initial suggestion for your play space, which you can then expand or refine as desired. Impeccable controllers and tracking PSVR 2 is finally adopting industry standard motion controllers, benefiting developers and users. For example, VR games will no longer need to create abstract control schemes specific to PSVR with a thumbstick, buttons, grab button, and trigger on each controller. And developers can expect every PSVR 2 user to have a pair of controllers, unlike the first headset's PS Move controllers. Those watching this video will notice that we say a grab a button rather than a grab trigger. Indeed, the PSVR 2's grab button is a binary button rather than an analog trigger. We prefer the latter because grab triggers are easier to maintain depression when holding virtual objects. So far, we haven't encountered any major issues with the grab buttons on the PlayStation VR 2 controllers. Still, they may be a little annoying in games where players are expected to hold the same object for extended periods. The controllers also have the same reactive triggers as the PS5 controller and rumble haptics in the handles. The demos we saw didn't give us the impression that either the reactive triggers or the handle haptics were particularly well implemented. Our best guess is that the developers simply needed more time to get to grips with the specifics of the haptics in the controllers. Developers frequently need to tune haptics from one VR controller to the next because each has different capabilities, haptic engines, and even haptic positioning, all of which contribute to different feelings even for the same exact game. Tracking on PSVR 2 is also a significant improvement over the original PSVR. Compared to the original headset's small tracking space, the new headset has 6 DOF inside-out tracking, which means that user can turn and walk essentially anywhere within range of the cord. In practice, both head tracking and controller tracking appear to be very good in PSVR 2. During my time in PlayStation VR 2, we didn't notice any obvious drift, jitter, or latency. Of course, inside-out tracking highly depends on the environment around the player, so we'll have to wait and see how the headset performs in various environments and lightning conditions. In any case, tracking performance is significantly improved over the first PSVR headset. While we're at it, let's talk about eye tracking on PSVR 2, which now includes support, foveated rendering support. We're curious if all of the demos we saw used foveated rendering, but it was barely noticeable when we played a VR version of Resident Evil Village. It's fast and subtle enough that we doubt most people will notice that foveated rendering is taking place, though this may depend heavily on how accurate the headset's eye tracking calibration is. Feature that the headset should have. PSVR 2 now supports eye tracking and IPD adjustment for example, and we're pleased to report that Sony has developed a simple in-headset calibration tool that would assist users in dialing in their ideal IPD and even ensuring the headset is properly seated on their head. When you run the PSVR 2 calibration, you'll see a cartoon head with holes cut out for the eyes in front of you. Blue circles inside the holes represent your actual eyes. Your objective is to position the headset so that the blue circles are in the center of the holes. When you get close enough, the holes turn green indicating everything is in order. This is a significant improvement in quality of life over the original PSVR and most other VR headsets on the market. While many headsets have a manual IPD adjustment, few people know their specific IPD measured in millimeters or how to look for uneven chromatic aberration as a sign of misalignment, leaving most to wing it and to try to align the lenses to their eyes by the look and feel. You don't need to know your IPD with PSVR 2. 
because the calibration step will automatically guide you to the ideal lens to eye alignment, allowing more people to get to the clearest image possible from the headset. Every VR headset should have this feature. Display and Lenses Experts report great image quality and captivating graphics, but the edges sometimes need to be clearer. For example, we noticed a good bit of persistence blur, which caused the world to blur slightly when he turned his head. However, the display was generally quite sharp. According to Lang, the fly screen effect, which was still very noticeable in the PSVR, was virtually invisible this time. The clarity of the Fresnel lenses has impressed us. God rays and fade-ins are present, but they are muted compared to other VR headsets with Fresnel lenses. The field of view appears to be significantly larger than in the predecessor. However, we discovered mirror artifacts, which may somewhat limit the image's clarity. Mirror artifacts can occur in OLED displays, which describe a slight inconsistency in brightness and color at the transitions between two pixels. Exchange OLED displays have higher contrast and deeper blacks. The majority of users will not notice them. We praise OLED displays and emphasize their clarity across the entire field of view. The high dynamic range provides unrivaled contrast, creating a sense of true darkness, especially in games like The Walking Dead, Saints, and Sinners. However, we discovered a flaw. We noticed ghosting or slight double image effect during the test. This made text reading difficult. This can only be avoided if the hands are completely still and the head rests. Convenient calibration. The headband and eye relief are easy to adjust and comfortable. The VR headsets does not cause painful pressure points even after extended use. In addition, the single cable solution is far more convenient than the predecessor. According to reports, the PSVR 2 outperforms other VR headsets with its simple in-headset calibration for proper eye relief. To use the PSVR 2, it is not necessary to know one's IPD value. Eye tracking takes care of that. The calibration guides users to the ideal lens alignment for their eyes in less than 20 seconds. The previous model's slider, cushioning flexibility and weight distribution are all present. What's new is a button on the front of the VR headset that can be used anytime to switch to pass-through mode. This has a higher resolution than MetaQuest 2 and can thus recognize details in the physical environment. In pass-through mode, we didn't notice any distortion. When establishing the room boundary, the system scans the space and recommends a suitable guardian size. This only sometimes worked perfectly but it was easily fixed with the controllers. A new dimension of VR haptics. The previous model's slider, cushioning flexibility and weight distribution are all present. What's new is a button on the front of the VR headset that can be used anytime to switch to pass-through mode. This has a higher resolution than MetaQuest 2 and can thus recognize details in the physical environment. In pass-through mode, we didn't notice any distortion. When establishing the room boundary, the system scans the space and recommends a suitable guardian size. This is only sometimes worked perfectly, but it was easily fixed with the controllers. Let us know your views about PSVR 2 in comments below!